three-time state champion, two-time college All-American, three European championships, 12 years pro. How? Consistency, uh, setting goals, uh, having a standard of myself, uh, you know, passion and love for the game. Passion and love for the game. Many people know the things you have done on the court, but you have also done some remarkable things off the court um, in your life uh, outside of basketball in the business world. Well, I think basketball started off as a business uh, at an early age for me, you know. Uh, like you said, uh, you know, traveling with basketball as a youth from the grassroots on up. Uh, just, just knowing that, that basketball can take you so many places and, and it is a business and it's even more so a business nowadays uh, than it was when I came up. I mean, nowadays, you know, kids are, are signing shoe deals uh, at the age of 18, going to the NBA, uh, high level grassroots basketball, Adidas, Nike, uh, Under Armour, NY to LA, all these, all these different leagues. Um, it is basically uh, a marketing ground for these, for these young kids. So. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's come so far the game of basketball, uh, but I think more so for me uh, off the court, uh, I think giving back, working with the youth, you know, I've been blessed with the wonderful ability, uh, and now I think it's just time for me to uh, you know, pass that torch and work with other kids and, 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 and just get them to the stage of enjoying some of the things that I had the opportunity of enjoying. Lately, there's been um, a lot of high-level guys coming to train with you. Uh, do you think it's because of your resume um, and the grit you've shown over your 12 years as a professional player? Well, I've been, I've been really focused on upping the ante a little bit. And what I mean by that is just working with some more high-level players and then bring those guys in here as role models. So I've been working with NBA guys. I have worked with NBA guys in the past. Uh, we've really put work in right here in this gym at the basketball movement and you know it, it's been wonderful I mean just really getting their insight because like I said you know I've been removed from the game professionally for close to four to five years now and a lot has changed and I've got a lot of questions I've had a lot of questions for those guys and and, and, and we've exchanged a lot of information and I think I get the gist of it now uh, up to this point of how the game has changed in just that five years. I was shocked when I seen your NBA pre-draft uh, schedule um, and training resume for the guys. Um, it showed me that you have a lot of experience um, and professionalism when it comes to preparing guys uh, to get to the next level. Well, I think, I think it's very important uh, for guys to prepare uh, and, and like I said, that's part of being consistent. That's part of the consistency uh, is preparation. Part of the consistency is preparation. And I think it's really important for guys to prepare. And I think going through that, going through that at a young age, going through becoming a pro, working hard, having goals, setting goals, like I said earlier, is very important. So I think the curriculum and, and the regimen that I've set set together for NBA pre-draft players and, and things like that, you know, dieting, nutrition, uh, you know, taking care of the body, being a pro's pro, the mentoring ship, just really talking about what it's going to take to to survive on the next level. I think a lot of guys see commercials and they see things on TV, but they don't understand that it's more than just what they see. It's the, be, be, the after scenes, um, you know, icing and, and taking care of the body. Uh, it's the before work of even getting there, you know, getting in the gym every day, sometimes twice, sometimes three times uh, a day. Uh, it's, just, it's just, you know, uh, interviewing skills, knowing, knowing how to speak, how to engage, uh, learning how to take care of your money. So I think that um, I can help in that major way of just, you know, uh, this is how you want to become a pro's pro. You were able to use your basketball platform and transition into business. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think um, it's, it's kind of a cliche, but it's a saying that, you know, don't let the ball use you, you use the ball. And I think I've, I've been uh, a guy uh, really into 
fulfilling that, you know, using the ball. And I think basketball was just a driving vehicle for me to do other great things I wanted to do in my life. So it started off with, with my Yannis Law basketball program, the grassroots, starting with kids from a really, from a really young age, you know, getting kids and, and, and training them um, from a young age. I mean, the sooner that we can catch young kids, the better, I think. Um, role modeling, getting with them, uh, just, you know, setting them up for success, you know, giving them not just on the court, uh, education, but off the court education. You know, this is how you handle yourself. This is what it takes in the classroom. This is what it takes uh, amongst your peers. I mean, just being respectful. You know, you know, even as when we go on the road and we, and we go out to eat, you know, how to properly sit at a table. I mean, how to properly hold a knife and hold a fork. You know, it just, just a common courtesy of thank you to a waiter or a waitress or, you know, just, you know, uh, learning those things because because it go a long way I mean your first impression the people matters and I and I want all of our kids boys and girls to know that your first impression matters uh, far as the basketball movement which is another business of mine that you mentioned the basketball movement was just a place for us to have high level skill development camps uh, bringing bringing kids from all over the country in and just really skill developing them uh, with the game of basketball once again I've used the tool of basketball to to, to get kids in here for, for you know, basketball skill development to further their ability. Uh, but not only that, we took advantage of that with our mentoring program, breaking down films, showing them how to study the game, um, you know, going, giving back to Convoy of Hope. We, we teach our kids how to give back. So the basketball movement, we linked in with Convoy of Hope and worked with Convoy of Hope, uh, uh, fed 10,000 kids, you know, boxed up shoes. We did a lot of work uh, in really teaching um, these young kids that, that, that does uh, come in with us at, at the basketball movement that giving back is important, it's essential. And then the last business, the one rep from Glory, if you notice I'm wearing that now, um, our, 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 yeah, yeah, the gear is kind of some of our new clothing line. Um, this is the outwear, but I also have court wear. And I think that, uh, the one rep from glory for me means, you know, every millisecond of your life matters. Every millisecond, every day matter. Every decision you make will, will help or destroy you. And I think we're all one rep from glory. I mean, when I played basketball, I always push for that, for that one more rep, that one more rep. And I feel like, you know, that's what, what made me climb over, over the ladder uh, or over the hump, so to say. Um, to my opponent, and I love repping out. Um, I'm repping out now. Uh, I enjoy the game of basketball. I love it. I'm gonna rep out not only just for the game, but but for young kids and for future NBA guys, uh, man, for the world. I wanna I wanna continue to rep out and do my part. You retired from playing, bought a sports facility, which is now known as one of the best skill development facilities for basketball in Springfield, Missouri. What did it take to do that? Work. I mean, all my life, you know, I grew up playing a game of basketball at Salvation Army, uh, playing at the Boys and Girls Club in, in Milwaukee. And I always knew that I wanted to do something in the sporting industry. I mean, I had so many people, uh, you know, push me through so many role models as coaches and, 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 and academic advisors and things like that. And, you know, I always aspired to be somewhat that kind of influence in the future. And so I always knew that I wanted to, you know, get a sports facility, give back and, 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 and be in that mentorship role. So, uh, you know, that's why I majored in community recreation and education, you know, and, and I had a minor in criminal justice, but like, that's why, that's why I, I, I bought the sports facility. Cause I wanted to have a place for kids to call a home away from home as well. Uh, not even just kids, but just people, adults. I mean, I hire high-level trainers, and you know, I, this is this is what I wanted, and uh, I, that was one of my goals. And it took a lot of sweat. I mean, I mean, I, I know you're interviewing me, but but you're my brother. You've been with me. I mean, we we learned how to clean toilets. We learned how to mop floors. We learned how to 
paint. I mean, think about how many times we painted in this building. And by trial and error, you know, we, we messed up. We came back and did it again. Uh, learned how to, you know, wipe backboards down. Learned how to change nets. You know, these are things that I didn't know even being a basketball player. You know, uh, you know uh, mopping floors, uh, cleaning windows, <laughs> learning how to use Windex and, and doing all the little things, the little things that it takes to have a business. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's hard work and it took hard work, but it's enjoyable because it's my passion. That's, that's just what I wanted to do, man. I just wanted to, I wanted a sports facility. I wanted to work with kids. I wanted to be this place of home base. So uh, buying a sports facility was, was one of the number one things for me. And that's why I retired early as well. I mean, it was life after basketball for me, but still involved basketball, still using that as that vehicle, like I said, using it as, using that as, as a vehicle to keep pushing, man. Now I notice you only hire men and women that have played the game, that have been through the fire, um, to do skill development in the facility. Why is that? I mean, you've got to take th this job serious. I know people look at basketball and say, oh, it's basketball. It's not basketball. Basketball is life. Uh, I think it's important that you get the, the right people, the right education, the right experiences of basketball into your, into your job, your, your facility, whatever, if that's what you're going to do. If you're going to work with, if you're going to do basketball, and if, and if you're gonna if you're gonna be that that vehicle for these kids, your job is to put the very best in front of that kid, the very best opportunity, the very best person, the very best role model. Okay, so I go out and I seek former college players, former pros, uh, male and female. Um, even even my assistant has something to do with basketball. I am mean, just having the, the education of basketball. Um, you know, planning basketball events. I think I think all of that is key, and 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 uh, you know, we welcome anyone if, if we can give anyone an opportunity to to work and earn a living. Then you know we would. But basketball specific, you have to have the right people, and and, and we aim to have the right people every time. Now a lot of people hear the word business and they think money. But because I know you personally, I know that you're in the business of changing lives. It's, it's funny because I think, you know, when you do things right, uh, money just naturally comes. I mean, people want to be part of something that has growth, that's bettering pe other people. People want to be around that. People want to sponge that up. You know, I, 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 think, I think, you know, doing it right will win out. And, 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 and I want to do it right, and, and I want to always get it right because like you said, it's about the kids, it's about the mentorship, it's about changing lives. And so for me, the rest will come. You know, it's not about money for me. Uh, do we need money for bills? Yeah, of course, that's why we charge. I mean, we, we have an overhead. But at the end of the day, um, this whole thing was, 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 was given to me from a gift, uh, a gift from God, the ability. God gave me something, gave me an ability and I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna drive it. And uh, it's been great. We've, we've been very successful and very happy with it.
there's been a lot of hype uh, on social media about the one rep from Glory uh, training series. Um, what made you guys go digital with your training? What's to come with the one rep from Glory? Um, are there some nice things coming in the future that people should know about? Do you have anything in the works that's coming out with uh, One Rep from Glory?